This video will explain why the magic number for delegates is 1,237 and how it helps promote the fairest solution given the current Republican nomination process. The 2016 Republican nomination for president has been very interesting this election cycle. Perhaps the most exciting part for election nerds like myself is the very real possibility of a contested convention if enough voters in Indiana and California choose Cruz. The way the Republican Party chooses a nominee for president is that each state and territory sends delegates to a national convention where there will be 2,472 total delegates. The delegates participate in several rounds of voting until one of the candidates finally gets the magic number of 1,237. For the last couple decades, this essential process has been a mere formality because, frankly, the primary process is rigged with winner-take-all states to give the frontrunner an advantage in winning delegates so that he or she can get to the magic number well before the convention starts. This election, however, Donald has been the weakest, most disliked frontrunner in recent memory, so that even with the system rigged for his benefit, it is very possible that he won't reach the magic number before the convention in July, properly leaving the final decision up to the delegates. So here's a breakdown of what that delegate allocation could look like going into the convention, largely depending on how the remaining states vote. If Donald doesn't get 1,237, the delegates will continue the voting process themselves until someone does. Some people think that's unfair, and whichever candidate has the most votes or the most delegates going into the convention should win the nomination. However, this magic number of 1,237 is actually what's called a simple majority, or 50% plus one. Even if Donald has the most, if he doesn't have a majority, having him win may not actually be the fairest solution. To see why, let's take a step back and look at what each candidate's public support looked like just a few months ago. And to make it more relatable, instead of choosing a presidential nominee, suppose you and your friends are trying to decide where to go out to eat for lunch. You take a quick vote, and it looks like McDonald's has the most support. So you declare McDonald's the winner, right? Clearly, McDonald's has the majority, doesn't it? Well, actually, remember, this is the majority. McDonald's has what's called a plurality. More than the competitors, but not more than half. But even with just a plurality, surely McDonald's is the fairest choice, you say. Look, all the other choices have even less support than McDonald's. Well, you may be right in some cases, but consider this common situation, where most of the remaining people absolutely hate McDonald's. Sure, they used to like it for its entertainment value, but once they got old enough that they couldn't play in the play place, they wanted something a little bit more grown up. Even though McDonald's has the most votes, going to McDonald's in this case would leave a majority of the voters very dissatisfied. A much more fair approach in order to please the most people is actually to do a multi-round ballot with a single transferable vote and a majority requirement for the winner. This means that if someone's first choice is no longer an option, they can change their vote to their next favorite choice. It may seem a little complicated, but let's run through a simple example. To begin, everyone votes for his or her favorite, so you force your two indecisive friends to make up their minds. Let's say one decides on Chick-fil-A and the other chooses Chipotle. The next step is to eliminate the option with the least amount of votes and to re-vote. Your friend who liked In-N-Out decides that Jimmy John's is his number two. Burger King is the next to go. Strangely, you find out that your Burger King friends really just wanted the toys, and some of your McDonald's friends promise to give them their toys if they vote for McDonald's. Normally, Jimmy John's would be the next elimination, but before you vote again, let's say you find out Chipotle was on the news with some sort of temporary health code violation. So all your friends quickly change their votes to one of the remaining options. They were pretty divided, but Chick-fil-A gets a good chunk. Now before we continue the process, let's look at where things stand. McDonald's is super close to that 50% mark and people are getting tired of voting. Can't you just choose McDonald's? Surely it's inevitable, you say. It just keeps gaining support and it's way ahead of the competition. But let's take a look at the preferences of these three different groups of your friends. Your McDonald's friends' first choice is obviously McDonald's, but if McDonald's wasn't an option, they would definitely prefer Chick-fil-A over Jimmy John's. For some reason, they're tired of eating at places without circular sandwiches. Your Chick-fil-A friends are similarly tired of Jimmy John's, but your Jimmy John's friends join with your Chick-fil-A friends in ranking McDonald's last, because with Chick-fil-A, they say they at least know what they're getting. These preferences tell you something super important. They show you who would win in a one-on-one -on -one competition between any two choices. If the two choices were Chick-fil-A or Jimmy John's, 80% would vote against the Jimmy John's establishment. Similarly, if the two choices were McDonald's versus Jimmy John's, Jimmy John's loses again. Again. But if it came down to Chick-fil-A or McDonald's, 55% of your friends would choose the healthier option. This information actually tells you that you can choose Chick-fil-A as the winner. But wait, you say, it's in second place. True, but that's just because there was a vote split between multiple choices. Looking at the one-on-one -on -one results, we see that Jimmy John's always loses, so it's obviously out. McDonald's wins one and loses one. However, only Chick-fil-A wins in each of its one-on-one -on -one competitions. Chick-fil-A, in this case, is what is known as a Condorcet winner, which is mathematically the fairest option. To see why it's the most fair, let's continue our voting process. This is where we left off. We eliminate Jimmy John's and those friends change their votes and happen to choose Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A finally reaches the 50% threshold and is declared the winner. With this result, only 20% are extremely satisfied, but 35% are at least somewhat satisfied. The remaining 45% are unfortunately dissatisfied, but overall a majority of your friends are okay with the choice. On the other hand, if you ended the process before someone hit a majority, 30% would be extremely satisfied, 
15% would be somewhat satisfied, but most of your friends would be stuck with their least favorite choice. So the fairest choice is Chick-fil-A. Even though McDonald's initially had more votes than Chick-fil-A when there were more than two candidates, once you get down to a one-on-one, -on -one, then someone will reach a majority unless there's a tie. If there are more than two candidates, you have to continue the process until it's down to two. Now obviously, not many people want to spend this much time deciding where to go out for lunch, especially if you waste your entire lunchtime tallying votes. However, remember we are actually talking about choosing the President of the United States. The way the election has gone so far is pretty similar to the example we discussed. Early on, Carson, Donald, and Cruz emerged as possible outsider candidates, while Kasich, Rubio, and Jeb were the highest ranked choices by the more traditional Republican base. Jeb wasn't as liked as he had hoped, sadly because people these days are more interested in how you say something instead of what you actually say. In a surprise move, Carson endorsed Donald and hinted that it was probably because he was promised some sort of leadership position. Rubio took a dive when he tried to copy some of Donald's tactics, helping Kasich stay in the race. And this is about where current public support lies between the remaining three candidates. But remember, we're talking about delegates, and Rubio actually won quite a few before suspending his campaign. If you don't let those delegates go to their next best choice at the convention, then the voters they represent will be disenfranchised. The mainstream media wants you to think that because Donald has more delegates than anyone else, he's entitled to win the nomination, and any other result would be stealing the election and disenfranchising these voters. However, remember that a majority of the voters would like anyone else besides Donald, and Donald only has a plurality. At a contested convention, we would continue the process of a multi-round ballot with a single transferable vote and a majority requirement in order to determine the choice of the majority. After a few rounds of voting, someone will eventually get to the magic number of 1,237, which is the mathematical majority. This process wouldn't disenfranchise all of these voters. In fact, giving Donald the nomination without getting to 1,237 would actually be disenfranchising the voters represented by all of these delegates by not letting them choose between the remaining options. Now, granted, the delegates' preferences don't always represent the people's preferences, but that's actually up to each state party to decide. And if you get involved with your local party, you can work to change that. To make the process is the fairest possible, you should suggest that the voting process include a complete list of voter preferences. Often your ballot looks like this, which eventually turns into this, causing a lot of people to feel like they have to vote against their least favorite choice instead of for their first choice. A better option may be for your ballot to look like this, where you rank all of your options by preference. This actually makes it much easier to determine the fairest choice, all in one vote, instead of having to prolong the process through several ballots. But either way, with a preference ballot like this, or the current system the way it is, the concept of a majority isn't just some magic number, it's what's fair.